coming up on Zola Levitt presents Satan's very last battle on planet Earth. Stay tuned. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Levitt presents... Hi friends, welcome to Zola Levitt Presents. I am David Hart. And I'm Kirsten Hart. Jeffrey Seif. Yes, thank you for joining us again in our series, Thy Kingdom Come, first aired in 2001 with our wonderful founder, Zola Levitt, but we have you with us today, Dr. Seif, we're so glad you're back with us today. Yes, and we have Zola again. There's an old saying, the long arm of the pen reaches beyond the grave. We hear his voice Amen. years later. Yes. And it's a biblical voice, why not? It's and a good voice. Great teaching. Yeah, and Zola, today we'll be teaching on the end of the thousand year reign of Christ when Satan is once again released. Why? <laughs> Can't we just keep him? It's, where he should it's be. an interesting story. We're going to take a look at the book Zola does. We do too. Mm -hmm. That's right. More with you, Dr. Seif, in a bit. But right now, let's go to Israel with teaching from Zola Levitt. Well, throughout this uh, series about the future, it's been problematic where to place certain uh, lessons. I mean, after all, where do you film eternity? That sort of thing. Uh, we didn't have a new heaven, a new earth, and a new Jerusalem, but uh, we found something. And in this case, we're going to talk about this last battle on earth. The It's called an invasion of Gog and Magog, even though there's a previous battle by that same name. I'll make that clear. And we came to this area. This is the Valley of Elah, where actually uh, David had a battle with Goliath. This is a famous valley. And uh, nowadays, it's the home of uh, giant satellite dishes that uh, watch the sky, that send up links, that uh, pick up signals from satellites and so on. And to uh, stage a battle or picture a battle of a thousand years in the future is very hard to do, but uh, perhaps um, these giant disks are part of it. In any case, the first battle of Gog and Magog, you'll recall in Ezekiel 38, this is the one we call the coming Russian invasion of Israel sometimes. And Dr. McCall and I have written a, a book that has been updated steadily as this battle seems to draw closer. The chapter begins in Ezekiel 38 this way, and the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. So we have a place called Magog and a leader called Gog, evidently. And uh, its capital cities are Meshach and Tubal, which always suggested Moscow and Tobolsk in Russia, but don't know. Uh, place names change over time. And he describes an invasion here, and he gives some allies in the fifth and sixth verses, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet, Gober and all his bands, the house of Tagarma of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Uh, it's a very reasonable and logical invasion of Israel that could happen any time. Uh, Persia, which is uh, the Iran-Iraq complex, even including uh, Syria and Jordan in the, in the great days of the Persian Empire, uh, Ethiopia, of course, the the uh, voices from the south, the uh, and uh, Sudan, and the, perhaps southern Egypt is involved, and um, Libya. It, it goes without saying. Gomer refers to the uh, area in uh, southern Europe around the Danube, that is uh, Bosnia, that sort of area, and Tagarma of the north quarters would be. Uh, north of the Caucasus Mountains. It, it makes a reasonable uh, invasion. In fact, I would say more than reasonable. I would say at uh, 2,500 years range, it's quite a prophecy. Uh, who would like to prophesy what might happen in Europe, say, 2,500 years from now? Anyhow, uh, there is this invasion, and it's uh, before the tribulation, or well, at the beginning of the tribulation. I'll give you the reason why I think that. Uh, 
It says, Thou shalt say in verse 11, I will go up to the land of unwalled villages. I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates. It's a pretty good uh, uh, estimation of modern Israel. To take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited. See, Israel was dispersed and now is back. And upon the people that are gathered out of the nations, that certainly describes the Jews, which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land, and so on. And he goes on to describe quite an invasion. Uh, he's against it, that's for sure. Uh, he, Thus saith the Lord God, art thou he of whom I have spoken in old times by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them. Uh, that's Ezekiel. 38:17, and it goes on, and it shall come to pass at the same time when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. And oh, he's angry. And the next few verses are, are some of the most vituperative verses in the Old Testament. And verse 22, I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him and overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. God doesn't like this invasion, and he wipes it out on his own. Uh, God has fought some of Israel's battles. We're going to talk about that. Uh, Ezekiel 39.9 uh, tells us that they're going to have to burn the weapons for seven years after this big battle, and that's what urges me to put it at the beginning of the tribulation. Otherwise, it would be, if it were part of Armageddon, as some teach, uh, gosh, those seven years would be sticking out in the kingdom. There'd be peace on earth, the lion lying down with the lamb, everyone worshiping the Lord at the Feast of Tabernacles, and people busy burning weapons and burning weapons for seven years. It, it just doesn't sound right. The seven-year period would work if it's right at the beginning of the tribulation, and I think that's uh, what will happen. Now, Revelation 20, verses 7 to 9, which are definitely at the end of the kingdom, have another battle called Gog and Magog. It says clearly, and when the thousand years are expired, no question that's the end of the kingdom, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison where he has been bound and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city, that's uh, Jerusalem certainly, and fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. A similar ending. God again doesn't like this invasion of Gog and Magog, but this is a different one, obviously. It's at the very end. It's interesting. It's the sinner's last battle. In fact, <laughs> there's argument to say that this battle is the end of sin in this world because uh, right after it, the next verse is the great white throne of judgment. So Gog and Magog number one is localized uh, in, in our time almost that, look, there's no reason it wouldn't be next Monday. I mean, it's every prophecy is in place now for this invasion to happen. It's logical. It's reasonable. We even have a reason with the whole world, with the media turning against Israel in what I've come to call the CNN war, because there's no war here, but they say there is. Uh, with the world turning against Israel, uh, then you have a situation where uh, uh, an invasion like this uh, becomes logical. There's reason for it. But it's localized against Israel, uh, only Israel. It's not a rebellion against uh, the Lord who is not here now and hasn't come back now and, and ha won't uh, come to the earth until the second coming. And so uh, it's a different battle. Also, Gog and Magog number two, the end of the of the. Uh, uh, kingdom is a worldwide battle. It says he convinces all these nations and so on. And it is versing Jesus uh, against his kingdom. Uh, they, they are attacking the kingdom on earth which, of which Jesus is the king. Both of the wars ultimately, of course, are against God and God knows it. And Deuteronomy 3.22 says, Ye shall not fear them, for the Lord your God, he shall fight for you. And I besought the Lord at that time, saying, O Lord God, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness and thy mighty hand. For what God is there in heaven or in earth that can do according to thy works and according to thy might? Uh, it's an old story. God chose a people, uh, promised them a land, and he's going to protect them right on through from the beginning in Deuteronomy when they get there to the end in Revelation when uh, the great white throne of judgment will happen.
Our offer on this program, Coming, The End, Russia and Israel in Prophecy, written by Zola Levitt with Dr. Thomas S. McCall. Both book and CD are available. The Bible tells of a northern ground army descending upon Israel shortly before the return of Christ. Learn more about one of history's most startling wars before it takes place in Coming, The End, Russia and Israel in Prophecy. God has defended and protected the land of Israel since the time of Abraham. And you have the opportunity to go and see this beautiful and safe, holy land. We'd love for you to tour with us. Go to levitt.com, our website, click on the tour page and find out more information. Now, let's go back to Zola in Israel. People from America just bowled over. If you've you know, been reading the Bible all your life, going to Sunday school, and then you're driving down a road, and uh, I mean, here, uh, Samson and Delilah were in here, uh, uh, you know, uh, Joshua was in here, et cetera, et cetera, uh, one after another. Uh, it, it's uh, like it almost blows up in your face. It's really something. And uh, uh, <laughs> I keep emphasizing I don't want to beat the subject to death, but we have a tour with us right now. There's nothing here at all. The CNN war isn't really happening so far as we can tell. Now, some of the wars that God has taken care of for the Israelis, well, he's really taken care of all of them, hasn't he? He's, he's their God. They are his people. But uh, uh, most notably, uh, big battles. The ep Exodus is the most uh, uh, tremendous. Uh, the number varies from uh, 600,000 to two and a half million slaves left Egypt. But anyway, they were pursued uh, by an Egyptian force that knew the territory. They, they knew the, uh, the sand. They knew the desert. They knew the, uh, <laughs> the harbor. They just didn't know that once the sea parted, it could unpart. And uh, that's what God took care of for them. So uh, their original deliverance out of Egypt certainly uh, was a uh, God-given miracle. Uh, then when they came to Jericho, you know, uh, <laughs> they were facing a, a city with walls 11 feet thick, by the way. Uh, and on top of those walls, uh, uh, archers and, and spear throwers and, and uh, the people who were used to being attacked from the riverside uh, defended the place many times. Uh, but they hadn't uh, anticipated people coming to uh, blow trumpets at the walls and <laughs> encompass the city round about and shout with great shouts. And uh, so God took care of that battle in a rather miraculous way. Uh, then, of course, there were the various battles with the Philistines, like the one in this valley. Uh, David faced Goliath was one of the battles. They, they battled them quite a lot in these parts. Uh, the Philistines were Greeks who came down from the Adriatic Sea. They settled along a lot of the coastlines in the Middle East, uh, plying their uh, sea-going ventures. They fished and they uh, shipped and, and so on. They had a lot of marine industry. And the Philistines were here for a while, and then they drop out of history. There is no relation between them and what are called today the Palestinians. They, they were not Arabs. There were no Arabs in the world when the Philistines were here. And after the Philistines left, you would wait centuries before the first Arab was in the world. So the claim that they go back to the ancient Philistines is spurious. Um, the battle uh, with the Amorites uh, is a surprising one. Joshua 10, 13, and 14 says, And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed, until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. <laughs> Of course, this is an amazing day. The scripture goes on. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down for about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord hearkened unto the voice of a man. For the Lord fought for Israel. And uh, that is what he did at that time. The uh, battle with the Amorites uh, was one of many that uh, uh, he interceded in, in remarkable ways. And the Israelis lost some battles too, for sure. The ten lost tribes were carried off. The uh, 
Uh, tribes of Judah finally carried off also. But in those cases, God said, I, I'm going to punish my people. I'm going to bring the families of the north and Nebuchadnezzar and so on, the Chaldees. They're going to take away the, the tribes, uh, the Assyrians who took away the ten tribes. That was another punishment. So it's still God operating the battlefield, but this time as a discipline. Uh, Israel's modern wars, though, if we jump to uh, uh, the history of this century, we can see that uh, God evidently is either still fighting with them, or for, I mean fighting for them, or they have become brilliant soldiers overnight because they have won all these wars in, in, in no time. I mean, the War of Independence in 1948, they fought five Arab nations. I mean, Egypt, uh, Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, uh, Saudi Arabia sent soldiers. Uh, other Arab nations sent weapons, etc., and they all fell upon not a nation, but a, you know a few revolutionaries, rather like in the American Revolution, uh, when the the British redcoats came marching in and arrived in big ships and all that with their fancy weapons, but they lost. God fought for His people in the War of Independence, and a nation they say was born in a day, like the Scripture says. Uh, the war in 1956 uh, against the Egyptians, primarily and the Israelis vanquished them uh, uh, almost overnight. The so-called Six-Day War was, was amazing because uh, uh, it literally lasted only six days and Israel decisively uh, defeated Egypt, Syria, and Jordan. And uh, it was said they could have occupied Cairo, they could have occupied Damascus. Uh, I mean, they pummeled them in six days. Uh, there was no contest. Uh, in the fourth war in 1973, the Arabs uh, did a cowardly attack on Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year when most soldiers were at their prayers and so on. And they did get in a first punch, but then two or three weeks, the Israelis turned it around, defended themselves valiantly still once again. Uh, people say that the incursion into Lebanon in the 80s uh, was an Israeli war, but it really wasn't. Uh, the Israelis were up there as part of it. There was quite a bit of fighting in Lebanon because uh, the Palestinians had moved in there, and uh, well, there was there was the usual friction that seems to follow them. And uh, General Sharon, who is now the Prime Minister, and the Israelis were uh, in uh, Lebanon at the time of the massacres at Shabra and Shatila. The Israelis did not fire a shot, but Sharon was accused of not defending refugee camps against uh, the Christian phalangists, uh, their enemies. This, the Middle East is rather complicated. Uh, Israel's modern wars, and, and, and you might call these latest uh, intifadas, this uh, 1987, the children who threw stones, it, it looks as though uh, that's a war, but it's not a war, it's, it's a media war. It's, it reminds me of when uh, the publisher, William Randolph Hearst, said to a photographer, you get me the pictures, I'll provide the war. Uh, if you have a lot of newspaper, you have TV especially, you can pretend there's a war somewhere. Uh, get the tape of the movie Wag the Dog. Uh, it's about a, uh, uh, a bogus war made up by the media to cover up some embarrassment in Washington. We saw it in the Clinton administration. We've seen it right along. Uh, presidents drum up wars overnight to take the headlines away from uh, some mistake they've made and so forth. Uh, this is this is not a war, but it's an unpleasant situation we've had in America too, which is that uh, poor people get angry, they riot, uh, uh, there are problems. Uh, just finished having it in Cincinnati, even while this is going on, but this got all the headlines. And as you can see, this valley is about uh, like the rest of Israel. It's about that peaceful. Well, that uh, ending invasion at the end of the kingdom, that last invasion of Gog and Magog, is significant because, as I said, it seems to be the end of sin, the last sin. You know, the first sin was way back in the Garden of Eden. This evidently is the last sin, according to Scripture. Uh, Revelation 20, verse 10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. Remember the fire and brimstone from the first uh, uh, invasion of Gog and Magog, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Uh, the last sin is, is a grave one, and God has had about enough and uh, finishes off the rebels for once and for all. And uh, that makes an end of sin, like the very next verse in the scripture is about the great white throne of judgment. So that's it. So from the beginning, uh, God has seemed to fight for Israel. And he has had two major invasions to handle called Gog and Magog. 
one uh, before the tribulation, I think, or just at the beginning of the tribulation period, and the other sort of heralds the end of the kingdom to come. Our offer on this program, Coming, The End, Russia and Israel in Prophecy, written by Zola Levitt with Dr. Thomas S. McCall. Both book and CD are available. The Bible tells of a northern ground army descending upon Israel shortly before the return of Christ. Learn more about one of history's most startling wars before it takes place in Coming, The End, Russia and Israel in Prophecy. Here at Zola Levitt Ministries, we depend on your gifts of support to bring you the television program Zola Levitt presents, Levitt Letter, our monthly news magazine, and Levitt.com, our website, as well as our social media outlets, Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. Your tax-deductible donations allow us to be a strong voice for Israel. So please consider us in your monthly giving, and thank you. This series was filmed in 2001. It's a few years ago, but it's still relevant. It feels like Zola was just teaching. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it is relevant today, right? We should be studying well, this. Is it relevant? Let's see, girl. Uh, <laughs> Iran is, is a, really 20 miles away from the Israeli border, Iranian proxies, Russian intrigue in Syria, that world pressing upon Israel. The question, is it relevant today? It could be said that it's more relevant today than it was yesterday when Zola was looking at the Russian invasion and all that this stuff entailed. Those places are in the news a whole lot right now. Dave, it really is true. And what Zola did well uh, and what we endeavor to do and what every generation needs to do is look at the newspaper in one hand and the Bible in the other, see if we can get them to talk to each other. Here they're not just talking, they're making out, they're kissing. What do you think, Dave? <laughs> Sounds good to me. <laughs> it's a fascinating story. Right. You know, and uh, at the risk of sounding entrepreneurial in this, to seize a moment, to have a newspaper in one hand and the Bible in the other, everyone that wants one has a Bible. Not everyone has a responsible look at the good news from the eyes of the Jews, and that's what Zola Levitt Presents does. Whether he's presenting from the past or we're speaking at the moment, whether he's speaking from the past or we're speaking at the moment, it takes help to get the message out. We want to get the story straight, but I want to ask you, please, help us to get the story out. We're looking at the good news through the eyes of the Jews, and that's a story not often told, and we really, really need your help in the telling. I know there's a lot of things that are competing for your time and attention, never mind your dollars, but please prayerfully consider supporting Zola Levitt Presents. That's a mouthful. No, you're good. But it's, it, it is so important. We need to be studying. We need to be learning. Even from ba way back in, two, I mean, it sounds like way back in 2001, we need that word. And that's why we're bringing back Zola. If, for this you, if you look study. at nationally syndicated television, they send their correspondents out there with their cameras. Here, we're good news correspondents getting into the middle of the prophetic story. We don't have the millions of dollars of ABC, NBC, CBS, and MNB, all these letters, but ZLM needs to get there with the Bible and let viewers know what's happening in the world. That's why I'm, you know, pressing a little bit, help us to do the telling. Right. As believers, we're all believers. How do we live our lives daily without being worried when we turn on the news and see what's going on in the world today? You know, and that's the million dollar question. It can cause a bit of anxiety. Mm -hmm. Zola will argue, and many with him, that believers are raptured out of harm's way before the devil has his day. And that surely is good news. That is great news. Yes, we have our trials and tribulations, but there's a verse in scripture that says that God has not destined us for the wrath to come. This unrolling of horrific affairs um, comes in the wake of our departure to be with the Lord. And, and Satan is let loose again. 
That's what I, I don't understand. After a thousand years, he's let loose. I don't think, I, I wouldn't think anyone would follow him after being under the reign of Christ. Well, I'll tell you what, I am not surprised between 62 years of living uh, and having experience with a lot of people in a lot of capacities as a police officer, as a pastor, a theologian, uh, nothing surprises me. I've seen a lot of unreasonable stuff that doesn't make sense. It does say in the text though, and here's where we get it again to review Revelation 20. We're told when the thousand years has ended, Satan will be released and he shall come out and deceive nations from the four corners, Gog and Magog, to gather them for battle. We're told the number will be like the sand of the sea. And they came out on a broad plain and thump. Then is the war to end all wars. And is that the Gog and Magog? Yes, arguably yeah. that comes there. He says specifically Gog and Magog. Goodbye, final battle. Right now, the devil has his day, but there's a new day dawning. And wow. that's what we're all about. Well, I want to be program. about that's the good news. Right. And there is good news to share. Yes, there is. People can be depressed, repressed, so pressed, and pressed. Um, people need to be lifted up. I agree. Here's a they, question, and I'm putting you on the spot. Do you ever get in that spot that you just mentioned? Depression, not depression, but anxiety, or are you able to work through that? I mean, we all do, and anybody yeah. that says they don't, I just think they're not telling the truth, right. you know? But I go to my knees, I go to my devotions, I go to my wife, I go to the Lord in prayer, and the that's Lord lifts me up. Yeah. And that's our message here on Zola Levitt Presents. Please join us next week as we continue the series with Dr. Jeffrey Seif and Zola. Would you do the honors of closing out our program? It's my pleasure. Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray, Pray for, for the, the peace, peace of, of Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS, or you can purchase it from our store at levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Thanks again for joining us this week. Zola Levitt Ministries and this television program depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.